Hello everyone, my name is Massimo McGrath. I'm Jake Agrito, and welcome to Neon News Network. Thanks everyone for tuning in. The days just keep flying by faster and faster. But don't worry, we'll still bring you the best of the best segments. Like Entertainment Statement, Student Spotlight, Neil and Sixty, and so much more. Now, to start off this lovely ensemble, we have Teacher Feature, where we dive into the mind of Neil's very own staff. This time around, we interview the mad scientist, Mrs. Zelensky, about his roles around Neil. Now, off to you, Dylan. This is Teacher Feature. I'm Jalen, and I'm here with... Mr. Zelinski. What do you do here at NEW? I teach science, mainly physics. I'm the department head of science. I run the ski and snowboard club. I help Miss Ross with the outdoors club, and I'm on a couple of other committees. What are the things you like here at NEW? I really like the guys. I have some absolutely awesome students. I've had a chance to meet a lot of amazing guys over the last 19 years and that's what makes the job special. Um, for new students at Neil, what advice would you give them? Just get out there, get involved. Don't just go home at the end of the day. We have had COVID blow through. We have had so many shutdowns. Everyone's been disengaged from their life past school. Everyone goes home, plays video games. Just get involved, try different activities. More and more teachers are now running clubs and after school activities. Get involved, make friends. You will feel much happier here because you become part of the school, not just come here to learn and leave. That's good advice. Thank you, sir. Back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, Jalen. And thank you, sir, for all the work you do for the science department. Yeah, if you count electrocuting as grade nine classes work. Anyways, coming up, fan favorite student view with our lovely Aiden T. Lander. Today, he's asking students about their favorite places to eat during lunch. Now, passing it off to Aiden. Welcome to Student View. My name's Aiden Thielander, and today we're asking students where they go for lunch. All right, what's your name? Manuel. Harish. Nate. Hensley. Jacob. It's Eric McDougal. I'm Hannah Kandel. Where do you go for lunch? Uh, I usually go to Big Boys or uh, Fearless. Uh, on a good day, I go to the Big Boys Burrito. Uh, honestly, it depends. Papa John's, Big Boys, wherever it's at, you know, good deals. I love it. Obviously, I don't go to Tim Hortons because that's obviously a part of the communist agenda of taking over Canada and destroying the workers' hard-earned gains. Tim Hortons. Uh, Big Boys, and uh, maybe if I'm feeling some pizza, I'd go to Papa John's. But like, Timmy's is always a good option. You know what I mean? But so sometimes, sometimes I'll bring a sandwich from home because I don't like to spend all my money. Usually, I pack a lunch, but you know, some days I'm not. You know, big boys, gotta go there. Great burritos, Papa John's, hit and miss. Uh, but I go to Big Boys Burritos because it's a small local restaurant. Uh, but ironically, I don't go there for burritos. I always get the poutine there. Where do you go for lunch? I love Big Bean Burritos. All right, back to you, Jacob and Masimba. Thanks, Aiden. Up next, we have Neon 60 with Joseph. Neil sure has been pretty busy lately. Should be a great segment. Take it away, Joey. Welcome to Neil and 60. I'm Joseph Prokosh, here to update you on the latest news, sports, and events here at Neil. Things at Neil have been getting a lot more lively, with restrictions being lifted. That means more sports are ruling normally again. We even have two baseball teams this year because of how many great players tried out. Congratulations to the Suns for winning the Junior Intramural Basketball Championships on April 11th. Intramural indoor soccer is having their final game on Monday, April 25th, but senior boys soccer had just started their first game on the 20th. Lacrosse is going to have a tournament soon on the 27th, and there will be a rugby exhibition game against Riverdale on the 29th. Big shout out to Canadian national rugby coach Ian McLeish for his tremendous support. The junior boys volleyball team is still going strong as they approach the playoffs in the beginning of May, and following right after a track meet at Father John Redmond on May 3rd. Good luck, boys! That's all we have for this episode of Neil and 60. Back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, Joey, for keeping us all in the loop. Coming up next, we have Culture Corridor with Ludwig. Today, we learn a little bit about Ethiopian culture. Now, off to Lud. Hello everyone, my name is Ladun Espinal and welcome to Culture Corridor. 
This is the segment where we ask Neil students about their cultural backgrounds in hope of learning something new. Today we have... Hanak and El. And he's going to be telling us about the interesting culture of Ethiopia. So, Hanak, is there any type of particular food that you guys eat back in Ethiopia? Well, yes, it's called a jar. It's a world famous dish. It's, it consists of a flat bread made of the grain known as teff, which is unique to the Horn of Africa and East Africa as a whole. It is used in combination with meats and vegetables, as in certain times of our Christian faith during our holidays, we take a 40, uh, 40 day fast in which we do not consume meat as Jesus did. And so we are forced to eat vegetables instead with our jar of bread. Actually, you've been uh, signaling to that book quite a lot. So I was wondering if you could maybe explain what that book that you're carrying is. Yes, this is the this is an Ethiopian Bible, the old one of the oldest concurrent and full editions of the Bible found to mankind. As most Bibles are missing holy texts from uh, from the Old Testament, such as the book the first and second book of Enoch, which discusses the fall of the angels and the presumption of the Messiah Jesus Christ. And if you were here to see closely, you could also see it's in our own biblical and normal text. It's called the Gez, and it's we are, and it's the only African alphabet to still be used in modern day, as most as most African countries use a combination of Arabic or Latin. Okay, that was very interesting. Thank you for explaining your item, and looks like that is all the time we have. Thank you very much, Hanok, for participating in this, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks, Lud, and thank you, Hanak, for that wonderful display. Next, we have Entertainment Statement with Max, who's talking about this year's NBA playoffs. Take it away, Max. Welcome to Entertainment Statement. My name's Deshaun. I'm filling in for Max. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. Today, I'm here with... Nicholas Guzman. Tristan. Aiden. What were your thoughts on Raptors versus Philadelphia 76ers game? Before I answer any question, I just want to say... I'm a 76ers fan, so people watching out there, don't get mad at me. But Embiid's shot was just, oh my god. Are you a Raptors fan or a Sixers fan? I'm a Raptors fan. Well, from a Raptors fan point of view, how do you think they're performing? Um, from watching all their games and not just the highlights, I think uh, there needs a there needs to be a big improvement on the defense side. Offensive, we're pretty good, but I think our stars need. A, like bring it up better like Pascal and Fred the rest of our role players are doing well um, other than that I think it'll be a pretty good series are you a Raptors fan or a Sixers fan I'm a Raptors fan well from a Raptors fan's point of view how do you think they're doing they're doing good on honestly they're kind of doing bad not gonna lie I feel like we have to pick up the defense especially on that big guy and then offensively, our starters like Fred and Siakam, they just got to put more shots up, get them in. Do you think there's a chance for a comeback? Yeah, Raptors in seven. I need it. Raptors in seven, and get Thanks, Max. The playoffs this season should be really exciting. Lots of talent spread across the league, including Toronto's very own Raptors. Next up, our last segment of the day, Club Hub with Aiden. Hello, I'm Aiden. Welcome to Club Hub. Today we're here with student council members. Today we're here with... Rory Kelway, grade 12. Tristan Robles in grade 11. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, what is student council actually about? Well, um, I think it's important that, you know, school is a place where there's a lot of teachers telling students what to do, but at the end of the day, it's a place where students should come to learn and so student council is about finding ways to advocate for students' wants and needs and trying to find ways to uh, make it more fun for students and have a more positive environment and uh, kind of incorporate more of the, the wants and needs of, of students into everyday school life. And do you guys have any goals for student council? Well, I think the last couple years have been pretty hard on students and, uh, you know, things are opening up now and it's it's feeling good around the school and we kind of want to just continue this momentum, incorporate more clubs and stuff, help each other out and try and finish this year on a positive note. And is there anything coming up soon in the student council? So not trying to reveal too much, but I guess something that we have that's big and planning is our main spirit week that we will try to run during the month of May um, on one week that we haven't picked yet. But it's going to be really big. We are going to have our spirit walk again. We are going to have our barbecue, hopefully some activities back at our school. 
and try to get our student involvement back and engaged in our school community of New York New. Wow, that sounds really fun. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for the student council for coming out. Back to the studio. Unfortunately, with that, we've reached the end of our episode. But don't worry, we'll be back with another episode before you know it. Stay safe, and remember, Fidelitas, Fidelitas in Arduous. Arduous.